Yo, Joes and Agents of Cobra Command, this is Steve. It's my birthday and I've taken a trip to the bottom of the garden because I've got a new vehicle. <sighs> 1993's Mudbuster. Oh, yes, 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 indeedy. An oldie, a newie, but a goodie. Uh, this came towards the tail end of the line, so you are fully forgiven for not having any idea that this thing even existed. And no, do not adjust your sets. This should be a teal color, but sun damage has actually worked in its favor because it's looking a lot greener. It should be the color of these stickers, but as I say, the sun damage has, has made it a little bit more Joe-esque. When I first saw this in pictures, I thought it looked a lot more like Dreadnought vehicles. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, if you're traipsing around through the marshes, through the swamps, through the forested areas of New Jersey, you're probably going to want this a lot more than you're going to want a Thunder Machine. So this would be the perfect vehicle for the Z-Squad. Yeah? No? I mean, that color contrast is still pretty sweet. But now that it's washed to green, I'm going to reinstate this as a G.I. Joe vehicle. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's set that aside for now. The Mud Buster itself is, it's interesting because it is a chunky vehicle, but it also feels kind of thin. Uh, it was in the era of G.I. Joe vehicles kind of having bogus undersides, and that's nothing new. It does, however, have some leaf, leaf spring suspension. If you see that point there, I mean, I imagine the plastic is pretty um, unforgiving at the moment, so I'm not gonna stress it too much, but it should have a bit of bounce to it. Uh, in any case, that ha there is an action feature. There should be a elastic band that runs from that point there all the way around on the inside and loops around this to give it enough tension that when you press this button, <laughs> handily labeled push, it releases that tooth and this bumper will shoot forward. Now, if that isn't a Dreadnought-esque action feature, I don't know what is. Uh, similarly, with the roll, roll cage, this is supposedly a feature where you basically smash mofos like that, which, once again, very Dreadnought. <laughs> and similarly, the, the decal, it says, no mud. Also, something you ex expect to find on a Dreadnought vehicle with the kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, nature. Anyways, it has a few reused parts that it shares with the Ice Snake, for instance, these missiles. Um, this, I think, one of these is similar to a Badger missile. Um, so there's parts reused all over the shop. Unfortunately, the seller, who was unfamiliar with this vehicle, gave me an extra grapple, which you could, if you wanted to, loop a string around and tie it to one of, well, to one of these points, in fact. And then you've got a grapple launcher. Why you would want to go, um, <laughs> Batman Forever Batmobile on this thing, I'll never know. But uh, the spring is not terribly strong. It's alright, it's possible. But I don't think it's going to be a very effective grapple launcher. Now there is a squeak and a squeal to these guys. Age combined with uh, particles getting into these hubs um, have given it a squeal. But I've found the quickest and easiest solution. WD-40 is your friend. Just hit it over there a couple of times, boom, doesn't have to be extreme. It just cleans the joint, cleans the friction points, gives a little bit of a lubrication. You work it in for a bit and hey, the squeal, she gone, she gone. All you've got is that satisfying sound of plastic rampaging over soil. So let's arm it up and consider who the hell is going to drive this thing. I'm going to bring your attention to the cab, which has always been the big selling point for me. It's not bad considering this thing's vintage. It's a very detailed affair. In fact, I don't think, even if these were functional doors, that they would be used as doors because you've got all that, you know, gadgetry on the inside of those, those doors. So even in an ideal world where this thing would have additional features, those features would be bogus because they've clearly teched out this thing with, with more than, than spec. It's very, very Road Warrior. It's very, very Dreadnought. It's definitely G.I. Joe learning a thing or two from the more impromptu uh, faction. 
you know, just take a pickup truck and armor it up, add this monstrous, fearsome bull bar and a grapple gun with, I think, two, uh, two machine guns, which, which is great. I mean, to, to rely solely on this missile assortment would be a little stupid. Um, I'm glad it has a, a cannon armament as well. There's something very interesting about this design. I said before that it's chunky and yet it feels kind of thin. Uh, that's not a fragility thing necessarily, but uh, the other point I wanted to make was it's quite a short vehicle for its width. So it's got a very squat appearance, which either you like that or you don't, but I particularly like it. I mean, in a, a motor pool with rather elegant longer vehicles, like your Desert Foxes, uh, and then shorter squatter vehicles like Ore Strikers that are almost as tall as they are long. This kind of fits in the middle ground and has a very high ride. I mean, that wheelbase is set way off the ground, so it's good for, just, as I say, rampaging over terrain. Um, I'm glad that this one has seen some years. The stickers are all knackered. I have no qualms about really getting down and dirty with this guy you know it is called the mud buster i fully intend on pushing this thing through mud just as i would push a snow cat through snow it's also got some authentic dirt as well on the inside of the cab and check out that embossed gi joe logo like for a 1993 vehicle this sculpt is in overdrive check this side paneling i have no idea what that's meant to represent but it's got fabric folds um, and sort of technical greeblies it actually looks like a big old wrench I don't know but uh, leave it to your imagination man there's, there's a lot to enjoy about this sculpt big fearsome grill yeah I believe they had to take the number of grills down from seven when they did the desert fox so I think it wound up being three or five but this they've kind of overdone it um, reason being, I think Seven is trademarked by Hummer and Jeep, something like that. I, it's in the Guy Cassidy interview on 3D Joe's. Check it out if you're curious. But all in all, a very satisfying toy, and I'm really going to enjoy outfitting it and playing with it. But who? Who's going to drive this bad boy? Well, you can't take a horse everywhere, so I reckon our tracker numero uno, Spirit gonna get behind the wheel. As I recall uh, in Lone Wolf McQuaid, Chuck Norris's character McQuaid had this 4x4 truck that had insane like turbo boost so maybe that's a, a similar deal with all spirit there. And who's equally lurid <laughs> to ride shotgun? Well get her lovely rooted hair flowing in the breeze because Ninja Force Scarlet is gonna take a ride as the, the co-pilot so that's it for the cab. Now who controls the weapon systems? Like I say, this is the 90s, so you gotta go pretty garish and lurid. You can't get more lurid than Ice Cream Soldier. Oh yeah, it's a giant paint a target on my back color scheme. Get those hands on nice and secure. I'm only gonna do one. His other hand can support the machine gun. Get the feet on the foot pegs. And that went on nice and easy. That is really, made to fit uh, these later battle core figures fortunately are very accommodating when it comes to, to being used with stands i guess it's because they were intended for this sort of stuff whereas if you try and use these pe pegs on uh, all the joes you're liable to crack a heel and that's it folks that is the mud buster ready to roll out <laughs> Yo Joe and happy birthday to me. Brr.